Uh, next upon my list, Councillor Vanderbeek. Thank you very much. Uh, there's not many questions left. <laughs> there have been some really good questions, and so most of my questions have been answered. But I do have, um, I do have a couple of things. Um, I think that that I've always said that I was supportive of of um, good, efficient, uh, flexible transit that is financially sustainable for the entire city. And so I still hold fast to that. And so it's not that I have any opposition to, um, in particular, to LRT. Um, I like the flexibility of BRT and various other things, but um, I would like to ask you a couple of questions and I'd like to start with the ridership on the B line. Uh, it is my understanding, and maybe you can, perhaps uh, through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, to either Paul or to transit staff. Um, it's my understanding that it is our busiest line and our greatest revenue source um, for transit in this city. Is that correct? We'd like to take a, a, a step. To you, Deputy Mayor, that corridor is is the uh, is, is as you described, not the B line itself, though. That okay. corridor is the so the buses revenue. that are, the buses that are on that corridor. That's correct. Okay, and am I correct in um, my understanding that there will be no buses on that corridor when we put LRT on it? Well, through the Deputy Mayor, um, not all, the, when we talk about the whole corridor. <laughs> Um, and as John and the transit staff are saying, you know, there's there's more than just King Street or Main East. So on the actual route that the LRT travels on those roads, we will be removing much of the, the bus that's there. But that's not to say there won't be any local service very close to that. So perhaps transit staff can talk just a little bit about some of those other uh, pieces that factor into it. Because if we talk about a wider corridor than just King Street or Main East, um, there's actually going to be lots of bus service that continues along that. And in fact, that's part of the challenge that we're going through now and the work that we're going through in terms of how we redesign the entire system around there. So I think it's important to clarify that. So I think Jim's going to handle that. Uh, through the chair. We are, are currently undergoing the, the changes to the uh, design of the local services. So we are talking about very close to the corridor, like Cannon and Wilson, as opposed to we may re reallocate the King route that goes along that corridor. Same on the other side, it could be a two-way Main Street, which is still under consideration. That's not been decided at all, but it, it could make a big difference. And then right up next to that is the Delaware route that's not too far away. So. Everything gets moved off the King, but very close by. Thank you. So through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, um, my concern is that we're going to give up significant revenue to some entity that's going to operate the LRT for a short distance, relatively short distance. Um, and a lot of that revenue supports the rest of the bus system in this city. So how, how, my question is, how are we going to make improvements to feed the LRT line um, if we're losing revenue because it's going to go to a third party? I, I understand that, that the negotiations are underway and the decisions haven't been made, but that's part of my difficulty in the decision that's being asked of us today. And so, so, so how are we gonna make that money up and how are we gonna support additional buses and additional systems outside of LRT if we're going to be losing revenue for whoever that needs to go to, Mr. Deputy Mayor? Well, through the Deputy Mayor, I'm actually gonna to turn to, to Chris because these have been conversations that are, you know, even precede our work here. So Chris, I think, uh, can answer some of that. Sure. Through you, Mr. Gray. Uh, through you, Chairman. Just uh, so you, you hit upon, I think, what is a really fundamentally important question, and that is, you know, after the discussion is had in terms of you know revenue sharing, will it leave Hamilton taxpayers and or the fare box in a deficit? In other words, will will the taxpayers have to pay more to uh, to uh, uh, you know to enjoy the the LRT uh, service? 
uh, and or, or will you know the the riders have to bear that burden? So that that was a question or a comment that I shared directly with Bruce McQuaid, and my comment to him is is that I fully expect council will have a concern about what kind of cost gets passed on. Fully understand the capital cost, how that's going to be managed, and I think we've had lots of questions about that today. It's that other question that uh, I know is your concern. So I think what we're hearing here today, um, and we will continue to hear from you, is is you know a, a fundamental concern about what does the revenue sharing mean in terms of uh, impact to the rest of the system. You know, our taxpayers going to pay more? Is there going to be more expectation coming in the fare box? And that will be a concern, certainly, to the city of Hamilton. Uh, we can't get at this answer quick enough, as far as I'm concerned, even though places like Toronto, for example, they're already building the system and they haven't resolved this issue there. So I don't think you want or we want to be in a situation before anyone signs on a dotted line uh, to move ahead with construction. We want this question answered. So. Um, you know, I've, I've communicated that to Bruce, and uh, and we're going to again today. You know, reiterate our our concerns about moving on this particular item because it's important to this council. And so we'll get you an answer from MetroLinks as to when do we expect to get this resolved, um, because it is fundamentally important to you and your decision about this project. Thank you. Um, I think that um, I think the hardest thing for me, I realize this is a comment, not a question, but I'll try and make it into a question. One of the hardest things for me um, goes back to something that Councillor Partridge asked, which is in private enterprise or as a small business owner, which I have been all my life, you don't make decisions about monumental expenses unless you understand the ramifications or the possible ramifications and the impacts and I guess if you want to say the worst case scenario, and if you can live with the worst case scenario, then you know if 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 there's a chance that it's going to be a great thing for your business or for the city in this instance, then absolutely you go for it. But I am having difficulty with the number of times that questions are asked and people's response is reasonably so, and I understand why. We don't know yet. Because we can't know yet. And so at what point, so here's my question, at what point do we make a decision? Do we make a decision in the hope that, and I'll go back 50 years, when they were destroying downtown Hamilton, we're going to make a purse out of a sow's ear? Or do we make a decision at a point where we've got more information and we're comfortable? And sure, there are on both sides of this equation people who are are, are really for it and really against it and I get the vision and I understand that and this isn't parochial for me. It's a question of good stewardship of the job I've been elected to and, and so I, and I, I resist making decisions without a confidence that we know what we're making a decision about. So I am going to continue to listen to the dialogue. I am, I, I'm not prepared to lay down in front of the, the, the whole project and say, not, you know, over my dead body. Uh, that's not where I'm at at all. I really want to see this city do well. And I really want to see this project work if it's going to do what it's proposed to do. And if it isn't going to be a noose around the taxpayer's neck for the next 20 years. But we're talking about five years down the road before we might have some uplift. Maybe six years, maybe eight. And we've already got a, a metamorphosis happening here that I would not want to stymie either. So, so you know, when, when we've got rich things happening in this city and people are feeling good and positive and hopeful and excited about what's happening here, far be it from me to vote on a side of something that's going to stymie that, whatever side that is. So I'm going to continue to listen, and I'm hopeful that some of these answers can come back. And I would really like to see this decision not be pushed to the point where we have to stand up and say no to something that could be a fabulous project for the city because we just don't have the confidence 
that is going to be what it's said to be. So I'm sorry that's not a question, but I really feel strongly about that. And so the more answers that you can give us before we have to stand up and make that decision, I think that's the safest way to go. And is that possible? Is it possible to wait for some more of these answers? Or are we really under the gun and have to say, okay, we'll do it or we won't do it? Are we really under that gun that it has to be done immediately? Or can we get some more of these answers so that there's more confidence around this table in what we're voting on and going forward so that we're not doing the wrong thing one way or the other? Thank and you. that's for poor well, Paul. Through the, through the Deputy Mayor, there are a number of points where decisions will have to be made. So let's, let's play a little bit, and for both sides. So we decide as a community, you decide as a council, we, we have a whole bunch of things we want from a design perspective, and the budget comes in and it's $1.9 billion. Metrolinx is not going to say, well, that's great, go ahead. So there's a decision point that may stop some things there. You may feel that there are some elements that, 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 you know, through this process that we're under right now, that the operations and maintenance is a good example of that. So um, from a project office perspective, from our reporting through, uh, this is titled this way for, for a reason. This is an update on where we are. We've been charged to do some work. We have to complete some technical work in order to get through a design process and actually submit for environmental approval. Let's say, for instance, something comes up through that, to which the ministry says, oh, wait a second, you've missed a environmental piece, uh, a sensitive piece here, and now we're back into having to redo something. So there are a number of ways. Um, my hope is, uh, you know, through the deputy mayor, that, the, that uh, I'm today not suggesting that this is, uh, this is it, because there are too many questions. This is only alignment. We haven't done the, 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 the detail work. I think there are a number of gates we're going through together. The project team will bring forward the best information we have as soon as we have it. Uh, um, and so we, you know, in some ways we took a bit of a risk even providing some of these general updates along the way because we don't have all the answers. But if we wait till all the answers, then of course, how do we get through some of these other pieces so we can nail down some of the concerns, perhaps on alignment and the philosophy, and then move to some of the other bigger decision-making pieces. There will be a number of these gates along the way that have to go through before we actually have a project that's being built in our community. Um, so I think that was an answer to another question earlier Earlier on, you know, when are some of these approvals coming? Uh, there are times where we're going to ask for your approval on certain things to move forward, and that's a, a, a more of a decision than just receiving an update from me on some of our thinking. Thank you, and through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, um, I'm very grateful for the update. And the update isn't my issue. Uh, my issue is the update that leads to a motion where we're going to have to make some decisions, and and so. Uh, that's why I'm asking about, you know, from your point of view with the project update, uh, you know, are we at a position where where we have to make a decision right now? I mean, are we in, in a position where we've got to have that motion? I, I, I understand. I talked to Councillor Marula. I asked him why he was bringing it forward. I've had conversation about that. I'm just wondering if if we're, from your point of view, if we are now in a position where Metrolinx needs to know, uh, uh, the government needs to know, uh, somebody need to know that we're all firmly on board and we're all going to forge ahead, and we've, we've agreed to uh, accepting the province's money, we've agreed to a memorandum of understanding, we've agreed to the Citizens Committee, we've agreed to uh, an LRT working group that's come back with this update, and, and so I guess my question really is, do we at this point, I'm not asking you to, to I'm not, I want to be clear, I'm not asking you to, to make a decision about the motion that's going to come forward at some point. I'm just asking you if we're in a position now where we have to declare ourselves or this whole project falls apart. Well, through the Deputy Mayor, I, I, th I think it's more, if there was a declaration that 
you know, when we when we signed and, and you know approval was given for the city manager to sign that memorandum of agreement, we signed an intent to move forward and get these answers and develop these details so that decisions could be made and, and this project could come together. I think if that's no longer the case, we, we should know that. But if that hasn't changed, uh, what I think you're hearing today on a number of fronts is there is information that has to come forward. You will be asked to, uh, to evaluate that information and make decisions at key points. I would love to be able to say here it all is today, but on a project of this magnitude, there's no one in the world that would have that at the eight month mark to, to provide. So we're not behind in any way, we're just work, working our way through, and you will have those opportunities to evaluate that information and provide direct feedback to myself um, and, and to Andrew, because he you know, is, is good enough to, to be at all these meetings, and we talk regularly as well in terms of what's going back. So I think it's only if intent is changing around what we've already decided, but there's lots more that has to go through an approvals process, and that's where, where other decisions will get, get made. So we just keep working on until that day comes where it's like, stop working. Then you know, then we you know, I'll I'll stop working. But right now, that that uh, that direction was given for us to do this work and keep bringing back to you sometimes updates, and then when appropriate, things for approval. Thank you, and through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, just my last comment. Um, again, I say thank you for the updates, and I want to thank you for your openness in coming to see some of us to discuss, just basically to bring us up to date in some ways, and and for the work that's been going on to be evaluating this. I, I'm I'm very appreciative of that and the openness with which. Uh, you coming to GIC to give all of us this update at the same time um, it gives us an opportunity to at least stay on board and understand where we're at, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. So thanks and great presentation. Thank you. And through the Deputy Mayor, maybe I'll use this as an opportunity. Andrew and I talked about this the other day. Um, we think we've made it clear, but we'll make it clear to everybody here publicly that we, we want to sit down and have conversations about whatever the questions and, and dialogue needs to be. Andrew brings a wealth of knowledge and understanding from Metrolinx and can go quickly back to his, um, you know, his leadership to get those answers. So uh, we, are, we have lots of work to do, but the, recognize the role that Andrew and I play, which is really to be that bridge between the rest of the organization and you folks uh, in order to get your questions answered and we will do that at any time. Thank you very much Councillor Vanderbeek. Next on my list is Councillor Johnson. Well, actually Mr. Chairman just a point of um, privilege I was named and I just wanted to clarify something. Uh, oh on a point of privilege then Councillor Rulla. I was named. No, but I was named. Uh, I heard point of Rula. privilege. You said John. <laughs> You're next. On a point of 